welcome to another week. Right, this week I'm going to be answering questions about business. Um, we did like a Q&A before, but it was just all a bit silly. My name is... I feel like if when I was an artist starting out, I really wish like some, someone was just like fucking straight with me and told me like what to do to start out. Okay, question number one. What platforms do you need as an artist? Also, full disclosure before we start, basically this is what's worked for me and other people might find my advice ship. So take it or leave it. What are the platforms that you need to do to start a business as an artist? First one, Instagram. Set up your Instagram handle. Very important point, your Instagram handle must match your website URL. So don't bother setting up an Instagram unless you've also checked that the URL is free. You do that by going on www.godaddy.com and you can see what URLs. And by URL, I just mean like the bit in between www.inserturl.com. Stripe is a payment platform and you need that payment platform to be able to take money from other people's accounts and put it into your own account. Setting up a website is like filling in a form. If you've ever filled in a form, you can set up a website. So I use Squarespace, it's like 40 pounds a month or something like that. And if you want the commerce feature, then it's like 45 pounds or whatever a month. Like not a lot to pay if you're like investing your life into being an artist. So we've got Instagram, we've got Stripe, we've got Squarespace and you find your URLs on godaddy.com. Okay, next question is, where do you find your own style as an artist? And by virtue of like showing up every single day and painting every single day, it will come. I know that that's like quite an annoying answer because you're like, yeah, but it's not coming. But like, just trust the process. And to be honest, like finding your own style is such a personal thing. It's just something you've got to work out. Sorry, can't help you with that one. You'll find it though, just keep fucking doing it. <laughs> okay, next question. Would you recommend selling online or in galleries? Um, for me, um, selling online and being in complete control of the message that you're putting across and complete control of everything, you know, the quantities, the work, I would say selling online. Um, an artist in modern times has never been more in control of and never been more powerful um, than they are literally like right now. We can post a picture on Instagram and it would reach more people than your piece of art would reach if it was like, you know, in a gallery in central London. Understand the power that you have, like you don't have to go down the traditional routes to like be an artist. You can be an artist just by painting and just like putting your stuff on Instagram. It doesn't make you any less of a person or an artist. But yeah, I definitely say for me, um, online and self-representation has been key. So, how do you build a brand as an artist? I'd say the thing for me was understanding like what my values are, what I stand for as a person, and then making sure that the business that you create upholds all of those values. Like, there's literally no point in being someone you're not at a workplace because it's exhausting enough pretending to be another person just making sure when you are creating a brand it is a, like a true reflection of who you are working out a price for your artwork oh my god the amount of times i get asked this question i think demand does play a big role in your pricing but not everyone is blessed with that demand early on make sure you're respecting yourself because people will respect you back when i first started it's your friends and your family that are buying your stuff, right? That's all you know. You, you've never set up a business before. You've painted this painting. Who's going to buy it? Shit. It's your friends and your family. How fucking cringy is that conversation? Like, oh, like, I, you don't want to go too far. You don't want to undersell yourself. Um, a really practical tip that I did was I set up a PDF document and I had the sizes and the price next to it. So it was like black and white. And if any of my friends or family inquired, I would just send them the document to avoid that cringy conversation. And then that type of stuff was on email, on a document. They don't have to reply. They probably won't reply because maybe they can't afford it. And that's literally absolutely fine. But having that separation was so helpful and it just avoids so many like cringe conversations. In summary, create a price and then create a document and send that to your customers so you remain out of the process. Do you know what 
know what I would say about price as well? Like it never gets easier. Like it's always difficult. The next question is, when is the right time to hire someone? So I would say in short, when life becomes a bit overwhelming um, and when your customer emails are taking, a, taking away from your time painting, which is the entire point, right? We want to paint more, we want to create more. For me, I would probably say that I hired my full-time member of staff looking back, like probably too, too soon. Um, and that's probably a learning. You don't have to hire a full-time person. You can have someone part-time and that person could be admin and they don't even have to work a full day. You know, you could get people in for a really short amount of time just to clear through your emails. I've just always been like a really big advocate of like getting someone else to do the stuff that yeah, doesn't bring you joy because what is the point? And if you can afford to, because your paintings are selling, only you will know if you can truly afford to. But yeah, make sure that art is the center of everything you're doing. Okay, next question is, how do you hire the right person? I've been very lucky with mine. I had my little, sis little sister was my first hire, thank God, because I paid her nothing and she sorted my entire life out and I love her forever. Also, Ella, who heads up our you know, heads up Sophie TR to be honest. She is my cousin and Hannah, who's head of customer service, is my best friend from home. So initially it's been friends and family and I think that's the way I've liked it because it's just been like, it's just been all very fun and close to home and why wouldn't you want to share the successes with like the people that you're closest to? If you don't have that, I would definitely, and obviously now we're bigger and I have people I didn't know before, and the way that I hired them was, it was just on vibe. It was just like like an intuitive, like, oh my God, they seem like a really nice person, great to be around, great energy, because I feel like above anything else, you need a good attitude because I don't want it to be a shit place to work. I want it to be fun. So basically, if they're a nice person, they're in. Okay, so one thing that I'm glad that I did right from the very start was document my work. I remember um, our early days I invested in getting high resolution images of all of my artworks and I was literally just like not even breaking even on the artwork, it was completely out of pocket but I was like, you know, someday I'll use this and I'll maybe make a print out of it or like maybe I'll have like a book deal and like I'll just like document your work, just invest the money in doing it. I could not recommend it more. So that would involve finding a scanner or finding a fine art photographer to get that high res file. Okay, so the next question is, what would I say that someone shouldn't do? I would definitely say, don't hold back on posting images of your artwork even if you don't think it's perfect like this isn't perfect to me but sharing that because otherwise people don't know that you've done it and if you're holding it back because it's not not what you want it to be in your head you're just delaying yourself more eyeballs on the painting like just get it out there like especially at the start when you've kind of got like not as much to lose just fucking throw shit at the wall another question how do I do my taxes? I don't fucking know. I still don't know. I don't get it. And it's fine that you don't get it because you hire an accountant and then they can just do it all for you. How about that for an answer? And I went to business school and I still don't fucking know. <laughs> okay, next question. When did you get a studio? For me, I got one right away. I couldn't afford it. And I paid 112 pound a month for a shared space. It made me feel more confident and that I was actually an artist. And it was the best thing I ever did because firstly, it like made me go in every day. I'm the type of person that would just like sit around and watch TV if I was at home. So it made me actually go in. Also being surrounded by like creative people like gives you something to benchmark yourself up against, do you know what I mean? Like just kind of a bit of the competition really like spurred me on. A big tip here is to find one with a month to month contract because then if you can't pay your rent one month, you can be out and you're like not contractually obliged to like keep paying and stuff. So yeah, I'd get one right away. God, I hated working from home. Some people like it, I'm just not one of them. What is something I've learned from shipping my artwork? <laughs> Biggest piece of advice, put foam corners on every single piece of art that goes out. I learned the hard way, didn't even realize they existed and now couldn't live without them. And they're cheap and they just protect your artwork. So just do that. Okay, what are my must-haves in the studio? It would have to be this 
divine instrument that was $49.99. Stunning. Records me in all of my time lapses and all of my live Instagrams. What's his name, right? Trevor. Trevor. This is Trevor the tripod. You know, until Trevor breaks, I ain't upgrading. Oh, a tape gun. Get a tape gun because basically, imagine this process. Do you know what I mean? Long. Tape gun. Do you know what I mean? I love, I love, I love, I love, I love you like la 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 la. If you've got any more questions, uh, just put them in the comments below and I can see if I can answer them or I can cover them in another video. Yeah, thanks for watching. Love you. Bye. See you next time. I need to finish these bloody paintings. Um, bye. I don't know. Call